Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Bismillah ar rahman ar rahim I see a huge crowd, a lot of people, and I'm happy to see all these people. And um, I have to be honest, before I came to this beautiful country, I didn't know that this was actually an Islamic country. I think most of the people in the Netherlands, in Europe, they don't even know that this is a 100% Islamic country. And it's beautiful to be here. It's beautiful to be in this country and I feel very welcome. And uh, first of all, I have to thank uh, the Ministry of, Islam of Islamic Affairs and His Excellency, the Minister and the Deputy Minister, who are so kind to invite me here. And um, I'm very thankful for that and for the opportunity for me to speak to you. I will tell something about my, about my history, who I am, uh, my journey to my conversion to Islam, my vision about what we should do in the Netherlands and in Western Europe, because in Western Europe it's very hard to be a Muslim. And I will also tell you a little bit about the foundation that I have established with some friends also uh, about a year ago. First of all, my name is Arnoud van Dorn. I'm 48 years old. I've embraced Islam about two years ago, in April 2012. And actually that was the best decision I've ever made in my life. And I'm very thankful for this opportunity and for that decision. And the fact that I am guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. After this period, after the time that I have been converted to Islam, my life has changed dramatically in a positive way. Before that, I didn't know anything about Islam. The only thing I knew about Islam is what you learn in the Dutch media, what you learn from Dutch and Western politicians, and that is only negative. Islam, as people are told in Western Europe, is bad, it's dangerous. It is nothing but a threat for society. They are oppressing women, they are all terrorists. And I'm ashamed to tell you now that I believed that that is the truth. It's not an excuse. And I'm ashamed for my beliefs and my ideas about Islam. And I think despite what you read and hear in the media and what politicians are telling you, you're always responsible for your own knowledge and your own information. And I've made a lot of mistakes in the past and I want to apologize to you here again for the mistakes that I've made. I come from a, a very normal family in the Netherlands. For Dutch uh, ideas, a big family, seven people, five children. I was the, the eldest son and my youth was very beautiful and very warm. And my parents are very open-minded and they are not to blame for the ideas that I had about Islam. Because I was raised from a Christian tradition that you have to respect any other religion and any other culture. So my parents did their best, but they were not strong enough, not strong enough to counter all the information that you get from the media, that you read in the newspapers, that you see on television about Islam, this creating of fear about Islam. To be honest, I think there is a worldwide war going on against Islam. Well, I thought I had to do something about this evil religion. That was my idea. 10 years ago. And I decided that I have to do something to protect our society from this evil, from this danger. And I joined the PVV, that is a very anti-Islam, Islamophobic party in the Netherlands, led by the famous uh, Gert Wilders. And at that time I thought he was my role model. I think he was a hero because he stood up against Islam and he stood up to protect our freedom 
And I thought, this guy, this man, that is the one I should follow. That is my example. That is my role model. And I joined the party, first as a volunteer, and a few years later I became the most important uh, political advisor for Gis Wilders. I, responsible, I was responsible for um, not producing the film FITMA but for distributing the, the movie, for promoting the, the movie worldwide. And I'm ashamed to say this, but I was proud of this. I thought I was doing something good. I was fighting injustice. And I really believed that that was my goal in life. And I told all the people around me, come and join me. Because this party will solve all the problems. And they are fighting the Islam. Well. If someone told me in that time that I would stay here, stand here in, in front of you as a Muslim, I would say you're crazy. Never. But here I am. And it feels good. And I'm happy. I'm going to tell you something about my journey to Islam. Because most of the people, they saw my Twitter message with the Shahada. And uh, they thought, okay, he's Muslim. Impossible. You cannot become a Muslim within 24 hours. It's not that when you wake up and you think, let's become Muslim. Of course not. I've been through a journey that took about a year, a year and a half. This started a few years ago when I still was a very active member for the PVV of Geert Wilders and I started to think how is it possible so many people in the world 1.2 billion people are Muslims and they look happy how is that possible are they really misguided I really didn't understand and I'm starting to get doubts about what you read about Islam, what you hear about Islam. And I thought, it can't be true. It can't be true that Islam is bad, that it's only evil. Maybe it's dangerous. Maybe it's wrong. But my mind started to shift. I never hated Muslims, but I was an Islamophobic politician. Some of my friends told me, you are wrong, you should get more information about Islam. Go to a mosque, speak to an imam. And I said, no, 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 no. I will never go to these evil places. I will not talk to these terrible people. Maybe they will kill me, I don't know. Going to a mosque, in my opinion, in that time was something really dangerous. If you get into a mosque, you probably will kill, they will kill you there. They will never let you out. Ridiculous, of course. But still something in my mind said, I don't know, I was starting to, have, to get doubts about, this, about this, this anti Islam message that we were telling to the people. I don't know why it really started, but I had these doubts, and these doubts, this feeling was getting stronger and stronger, and I really didn't, didn't understand. So, at a certain moment, I thought, okay, I will take this opportunity because a friend of mine, Abdul Ghulani, is now one of my best friends. He is a Muslim. And he said, okay, uh, you will never believe it, but I've arranged for you a visit to the mosque in The Hague. And I said, no, 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 please, please don't do that. I don't, I don't want to go to a mosque. And he said, yes, you go, come with me. I will protect you. <laughs> and I thought, okay because he's a really big guy. And I thought, okay, I'll come with you. But only, only for five minutes. Only for five minutes, and then I, then I go. And I went to this mosque, the Asuna Mosque in The Hague, the biggest mosque. And I was really surprised because the people inside, they were friendly towards me. The Imam came to me, he took my hand, 
And he said, you're welcome. And I looked into his eyes and I saw that he was honest and that he was sincere. To be honest, it was an emotional moment. Because I thought, if Islam is terrible, is evil, how come with everything that I have said and everything that my party did against Islam, how come this man is so friendly? How come I am welcome in the mosque? I really didn't understand. It was really confusing. And basically, I wanted to turn around and go back. Because I thought, no, no, no. I don't, this is not good. This is not good. But of course, uh, I didn't go. And we went in the mosque. And he, I got some, he offered me coffee and something to eat. And um, eventually, I said to him before, I will never leave, I will not uh, be here longer than five minutes, maybe ten minutes, because I go, I have a very busy schedule. It was a lie, of course, but I just thought I want, I want to leave. But in the end, I was staying there for maybe two, two and a half hours, talking, talking, talking about Islam, about the Prophet, peace be upon him, about the Quran, about Sunnah, about Hadith. And um, I left with my mind full of thoughts. I was more or less lost. I didn't go home straight away. I walked for about an hour, maybe two hours, only thinking, thinking, what's happening? What's happening? How come these people are so friendly? Why are they trying to help me? Why are they so kind and so warm? And this was against everything that I've learned about Islam. And I thought when I went home, um, this is not good. This is what they have warned me about. That they will get into your mind. And they will make you believe that Islam is good. And I thought, okay, okay, try to forget this. Because your, your mind is, 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 something is going wrong. You're brainwashed, probably. And I went home and I tried to forget everything about the, the meeting, everything about the, the kind words from the Imam, and every, every wisdom and every beautiful things that I've heard about Islam. I said, no, 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 no. And for maybe a week, two weeks, I thought, okay, this was my visit to the, to the, to the, um, to the mosque, the first and last visit ever. I will not let myself getting brainwashed by these people. But still something inside me, something in my heart, something in my mind, a very small spark was still, it, was still there and it didn't go away. How much I tried, it didn't go away. I still had these doubts. And I was really working hard to, 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 to push it away. It didn't work, it didn't work. So finally, I went back to the mosque after a few weeks and I said, okay, you told me something about Islam, tell me more. I had, a, I had lots of questions, a lot of critical questions, of course, maybe 90%. But I thought, okay, I'll go back to the mosque and, uh, well, it will be clear after an hour that, uh, that everything is, that I'm right, that Islam is, is evil, that it's, it's wrong. It didn't happen. Of course not. And again I was in the mosque for two hours, two and a half hours. And he gave me, when I left, the Holy Quran, and he said, the Dutch translation, and he said, okay, read. You don't have to read. If you have time, start reading. Even for five minutes. Even one page. But start reading. Doesn't matter where you start, in the middle, in the end, in the beginning, but start reading. And I accepted the Quran and I went home. And I thought, okay, I will know more about Islam. Not with the intention to convert or to become a Muslim, of course not. But I was triggered. I was curious. I wanted to know more I wanted to know more. And I start reading and um, my doubts were getting stronger and stronger. And the more I was reading the more I was talking to the Imam, the more I was talking to other Muslims, the more clear it became to me that I was wrong, that my party was wrong, that Gert Wilders was wrong, 
that most of the people and the media and the politicians in the Western world are wrong about Islam. And it's hard to, I'm not sure how to explain this to you, but it took me a long time to find out actually that Islam is a very beautiful, very wise religion. That it has solutions for most of the people. But between that period and where I am now as a Muslim, there was about a year, a journey that took a year uh, with ups and downs. Sometimes I thought, no, I'm wrong. Sometimes I thought, yes, it's beautiful. Then I didn't go to the mosque for a few months because people say, don't go there, and I believe them again. So something was trying to pull me back from the mosque. Shaitan is everywhere, of course. I know that now. But still, the more I was learning about Islam, the more I was reading, the more beautiful it became to me. And the more I was lost, I felt lost, I felt lonely, I felt, where do I belong? I'm not a Muslim, but I don't see them as evil anymore, I don't see them as enemy anymore. I don't belong to this political party, where do I belong? I didn't know, I was lost. And I also was a little bit depressed in this period, because everything that I thought was clear for years turned out to be wrong. All my prejudiced ideas about Islam, that they were oppressing women, that it was evil, that they were terrorists, it became clear to me that it was wrong, that I was wrong, that these people are wrong who are telling us this. And after a year, a bit longer, a year and a half, I decided, okay, this religion is so beautiful, so peaceful, so wise, the people that I've met are so friendly, so warm, and everything they are telling me fits me as a person. I feel it in my heart. This religion is the most beautiful and most sincere and loving religion. And then yes, in April 2012, I said the Shahada in the mosque in The Hague, the mosque that I hated before, the mosque that I thought was the center of evil, and here I am. And lots of people ask me, what was the thing that actually triggered you? It's not easy to answer that, because as I told you before, it was a journey. It was a journey with ups and downs. But to be honest, one of the scholars in this mosque, Abu Ismail, uh, he's now my mentor and the one who is guiding me and he's teaching me about Quran and uh, giving me Arabic lessons. He gave me a book that he wrote with some uh, of the students from uh, the university in Medina about the life of the Prophet, peace be upon him. Especially this book opened my eyes. This person Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He became my role model. His life, with all his struggles, all the problems that he faced, all the attacks, all the enemies, even the attacks on his own friends, his own family. And yet he remained peaceful and wise and righteous despite all the setbacks, despite all the injustice that he faced, he still was merciful and forgiving. And I thought, if a person can be so great, so strong, that is something, someone I really admire. That for me is my role model. That is the person that I want to be. That is the person that I want to try to, to follow. 
And actually, I'm a little bit emotional at this time, at this moment, when I talk about the Prophet, peace be upon him, and everything that he faced. I thought I had a difficult life. I thought I have problems. I was in trouble. That is nothing compared with everything he had to face in his life. And I will call to everybody, especially the young generation, the youth, the children, follow the Prophet, peace be upon him. Read about the Prophet, get knowledge about the Prophet. Because this is the person that we all have to follow. His life, his vision, his behavior, everything that he is teaching us. Well, you think that if you are a Muslim, if you have converted to Islam, if you have embraced Islam, then you're finished, then you're done, and then you step in a new life. Probably here in this beautiful country, or in any other Islamic country. But if you become a Muslim in a Western country, Western European country like the Netherlands, your problems only start. As I told you before, there is a war going on against Islam worldwide. Especially in Western Europe, and most of all in the Netherlands. I always thought in the past the Netherlands is a very open-minded country, a tolerant country, a tolerant society, not anymore. There are 70 million people living in the Netherlands, among them a minority of 1.2 million Muslims, and now I am one of them, subhanAllah. But their life, our life, is very difficult. Very difficult. Islamophobia is growing. Muslim hate is growing. The media and politicians are getting more and more against Islam, against Muslim. I can say now, from my own experience, that the Muslim community in Western Europe, especially in the Netherlands, is oppressed. They are not free. They say there is freedom of religion, freedom of speech. Yes, there is, but not for Muslims. It would be nice for the most of you, oh, no, nice is not the right, the right word, it would be very interesting and a learning experience for the most of you here to come to the Netherlands, to come to a Western country and to feel for yourself how it is to be a, an oppressed minority. An occasion like this, this event, me speaking here to you, to all these Muslims, that unfortunately is impossible in the Netherlands. The last few weeks the media is getting even more mean and harsh against the Muslims in the Netherlands. And I have a newspaper. You thought, why, why is he bringing a newspaper? Well, a few times ago, a few days ago, um, I heard from uh, a very big organization, an Islamic organization in the Netherlands, and they're organizing uh, charity meetings where people are uh, asked to donate for, uh, for beautiful uh, uh, projects to support Islam and to help uh, um, young people in Islamic countries to fight poverty in Islamic countries. And this organization invited scholars from Kuwait, from Saudi Arabia, and normally, this was not a problem. But now, the media said no. And the politicians said no. We don't want any scholars anymore. We don't, people from other, we don't want people from other Islamic countries in our country. And they started a campaign to make these people look suspicious and bad. And I will show you this. This is a newspaper from a few days ago, a Dutch newspaper. 
and it shows three scholars, very wise people from Saudi, from Morocco, and they are portrayed in this newspaper as criminals. Their visa were rejected, and they said, no, we don't want any of these people anymore in the Netherlands. They are banned from the Netherlands. And not only in my country, in most of the Western countries, they are not welcome anymore. And I know why. Because despite of all the efforts to fight Islam, Islam is growing in Western Europe. Islam is growing in the Netherlands. It is the fastest growing religion in Western Europe. And for some people that is probably a threat. For example, now it's February 2015, only the last two months more people have embraced Islam than in the entire year 2014 in the Netherlands. Marshall. And most of them are young people between the age of 12 and 25, the young generation. And you see how much efforts are taken to fight Islam. How hard the media is working, how hard politicians are working against Islam to fight Islam. Still Islam is growing. Still Islam is growing. And that proves that Islam is stronger than hate. Even my own son, I have three sons, my eldest son, Iskandar, he was just like me, very anti-Islam. He also thought Islam was dangerous and evil. And he went with me to the Dubai Peace Conference last year in April. And even he, the last person on earth, I thought, who would embrace Islam, embraced Islam during this conference in Dubai last year. And I couldn't believe my eyes. I got tears in my eyes when I saw him there. He was saying the Shahada. He was embracing Islam. And I saw at this moment, he changed. His entire expression changed. He was happy. He was crying. This was so beautiful. And this is something that I see more and more and more in the Netherlands, in my country. All these young people embracing Islam, all these young people converting to Islam. It is beautiful. But at the same time, the gap between Muslims and non-Muslims is bigger, is growing. Muslims are attacked in my country. Women are attacked on the streets. People are attacked at their work in the mosque. Mosques are attacked, set on fire, vandalized. And the police, the government, politicians, nobody does anything. Nobody is, pro is protecting this minority so far for our freedom. Yes, there is freedom, not for Muslims. So I thought about a year ago, I should do something about this. I feel that I have an obligation, a responsibility to help the Muslim minority, the Muslim community in my country. And I also felt I have to do something good. I have to repair some of the, some of the damage that I was respons responsible for. And we started two things. First of all, a political party called Partij van de Eenheid, Party for the Union, the first Islamic-based party in the Netherlands, and we were elected. Now I'm a member of the Hague City Council for this party, and also, at the same time, we established a new foundation, European Dawa Foundation, because we feel, I feel, and with me, my whole organization, organization all the volunteers, that we have to do something to help the Muslims, to help our community. 
because the government is not doing anything. The government is not protecting us. The government is giving our youth wrong information about Islam. They are polluting their minds with evil and hatred. So we started with this foundation a year ago, very small. We started in a garage. Now we have a small office. We're getting bigger and bigger. And we thought we have to make sure that the young generation gets the right knowledge about Islam. What they need is knowledge. What they need is Islamic education if they want to. What they need um, are dialogue sessions, conferences where you can meet other Muslims, where you have dialogue between Muslims and non-Muslims, where you can shake hands with each other, where you can talk with each other. And that is what we should do. We should build bridges. And that is very hard, very hard, because the government is working against us. For example, I was invited to the United States for some lectures and by the uh, ICNA relief, and um, I was rejected a visa. So, even from a citizen from a Western country who wants to visit another Western country, they say, no, you're a Muslim, so you are dangerous, you're probably a terrorist, your, your, your name is on the blacklist, you're not allowed to enter the United States or Canada. That's where we are at this moment. But it doesn't matter. Because we now see in the Netherlands that the young generation at the age of 12, 13, 14, 15, they are really open-minded and curious about Islam. Especially non-Muslims. They are curious about Islam. They want to know more about Islam. And our foundation is growing by the day. Our party, our Islamic-based party, is growing by the day. We have almost 400 volunteers only in the city of The Hague that are working for us. So, we are far from where we want to be. And that is a society where Muslims and non-Muslims can live together in peace. We are not there. And again, this will be a long journey. And I'm worried about the next coming years. Because there is so much anger, so much frustration, as well in the Muslim community and in the non-Muslim community. They are facing each other. They see each other as enemies. And as you well, probably well know, a lot of our young Muslim Muslims in the Netherlands are misguided. They are brought to the wrong path. They are radicalizing. They are getting very extreme. And they are starting to attack non-Muslims in the Netherlands. Even that is happening. And that is a great concern. That is a great concern. I think, I hope, inshallah, in the long term, we will close these gaps. We will work together. That is possible. But for now, we're facing a very, very difficult future in the Netherlands, in Western Europe. Because there is so much hate against Muslims. Muslims are not safe. If you are a Muslim and you are 16, 70 years old, it's almost impossible to get an education. It's impossible to get a job. Unemployment among, among Muslim youth is about 70 to 80%. There is discrimination, ethnic profiling. And for example, as I showed you, the newspaper, they will make it very hard for the Muslim community and for the young people to organize themselves, to organize events, to speak in public. So, lots of challenges, lots of challenges. I was even threatened because I was going to this beautiful country and I would speech in this place and they said if you do that you make it very difficult for yourself so probably when I come back to the Netherlands when I land in Amsterdam airport I will be interrogated by the intelligence agency by the police why I don't know because I'm a Muslim because I want to build bridges because I want to give the right example because I want people to explain 
what Islam really is? A message of peace? A religion of peace? If you say that, if that is your opinion, if you try to do something positive with Dawah, you're an enemy. You're an enemy. So I am probably an enemy of the state. That is the Netherlands today. That is Western Europe today. And I have to be honest, of course, we don't all give the right example. There are a lot of problems in the world. And some of them are caused by Muslims. I know. But still, because of the acts of some, a whole community, the entire Ummah, is being positioned in a place where they, were, where they are called enemies, evil, people that we don't want. And some of the Muslims, the Muslim community in the Netherlands, they are leaving. They are going back to where they came from, the first generation. They go back to Turkey, to Morocco, to Tunisia, to Algeria. But the second generation and the third generation, they say, no, we don't leave. We live here. We are helped. We have helped to build this country. We pay taxes. We have had an education. I'm a dentist. I'm a doctor. I'm an engineer. I'm a full member of this society. And yes, I have obligations. And yes, I have to give, I have to give the right example. But I also have rights. And they are standing up against injustice. And they are standing up against oppression. And that is beautiful to see. That is beautiful to see. And they are willing to talk to non-Muslims. They are willing to build bridges. But sometimes, of course, they feel alone. And sometimes they are angry. And sometimes they are frustrated. And it's not easy always to give the right example. It's not easy to be and to act like the Prophet. Peace be upon him. But still, I am hopeful for the future. I am hopeful for the future. Because I have embraced Islam. I know what Islam really stands for. I know now Islam is a beautiful religion. I know now Islam is peace. And I will continue to bring this message. I will continue to fight for the Islamic community. In the Netherlands and outside. And I will continue to fight for justice. And I don't care how many opposition I get, how many threats I get. I don't care. I go on. And even in my own family, some of them, they don't want to know me anymore. They, talk to, they don't talk to me anymore. Some of my friends, our colleagues, some of them I've known for 20, 30 years, they don't want to see me anymore. I'm not invited to their parties or for holidays or anything. But I don't care. I got something back that is much more powerful and much more beautiful than everything they have all together. Because the only thing they know is hate. The only thing they have is fear. And I don't have fear. I don't have hate. I feel love for people. I feel love for mankind. Muslims and non-Muslims. And I will continue to build bridges and I will continuing to invite people to Islam and I will continuing with my foundation I will continuing with Dawa and well it's not easy to to be proud all the time because you see also a lot of injustice amongst our own community But we have one great challenge, and that is that we all have to find a way to, to become united, to become one, to become one Ummah. Because we are divided, divided. And that's a shame. And I think a lot of this dividing is created by forces, by enemies of Islam, 
by Zionists, the Zionist agenda, I'm sure that they are doing everything to make sure that this beautiful Uma is not united. And as long as we are not united, we will never be strong. And we have to unite. We have to work together. Can you imagine if this 1.2 billion Muslims are all one and all working together? What a power we can be. What a change we can make in the world. How many th good things we can do. This is possible. This is possible, I'm sure. But for now, I would say again, I am proud to be here. I'm a very lucky person. I am lucky that I, that I was guided by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is something that I want everybody to feel. This relief, this happiness. And I am a different person. People tell me that I am a different person. I think I'm more relaxed. I'm more happy. I feel much more stronger than I felt before in my life. And I'm sure this feeling will only grow. And of course, I'm only for two years a Muslim. So if I'm talking about knowledge, I have to learn a lot. I have to learn a lot. I'm not a scholar. I can only talk here from my own heart, from my own personal experience, from my own journey. But still, the last two years of my life are the best years of my life. I've never been as happy as I am now. And that is something that is so beautiful, that is so strong, and that is something that I wish was available for everybody in the world. But we have to wait and we have to be patient. We have to go on at giving the right example. And we have to go on being the good followers of the Prophet, peace be upon him. And we have to go on gaining knowledge about Islam. And we must study every day. And we must learn every day. Because you're never finished about learning over Islam. So finally, I will end here. Again, I want to thank you for this great opportunity to be here. It is beautiful and it feels so warm to be here in an, this beautiful Islamic country. And I feel the, the warmth of all the people. I feel the peace of all the people. And you have to realize that you are blessed people, that you live in an Islamic country. Some people take it for granted. But you have to realize that it's really beautiful not only to be a Muslim but to live in a Muslim country where you are free to be a Muslim, where there is no oppression. Don't take it for granted. And work on knowledge. I also want to ask you to do dua for our Muslim community in Western Europe, for the oppressed Muslims, for the oppressed brothers and sisters. And please do dua for our young generation, for the children, to make sure that they are open-minded and that they are embracing Islam and that they want to know more about Islam. And I hope that they will be guided, inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the strength to give the right example and may He protect us and guide us and make sure that we stay on the right path. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much.